my name is Puneet Sani and this is a demo video for Baiju's. I will be discussing about cell and its components. Now first starting with what is cell. Cells are the building blocks of all living organisms. All living organisms are made up of cells. Cell is the most basic structural and fundamental unit of life. Structural because many cells combine to form tissues, tissues combine to form organs, organs combine up to form organ systems and further a full complete organism is formed. Cells can be of different various shapes and sizes based on their function. For example, nerve cells are elongated, blood cells are disc shaped, fat cells are large and spherical, sperm cells are elongated with presence of plasma for movement. The first cell was discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665 using his compound microscope. Now moving on to the next slide, types of cells. Based on their structural complexity, cells are divided into two main categories, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus but only contain a region containing genetic material called nucleoid. Here in this image we can see the nucleoid where genetic material is present like this. In eukaryotic cells a true nucleus is present which we can see here in the image. All unicellular organisms like bacteria, archaebacteria and cyanobacteria are have prokaryotic cells. While protozoans and all multicellular organisms like plants, fungi and animals like us are made up of eukaryotic cells. The size of prokaryotic cells ranges from 0.1 micrometer to 0.5 micrometer, while the size of eukaryotic cells ranges from 10 to 100 micrometers. Prokaryotic cells lack membrane-bound cell organelles, while eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound cell organelles like mitochondria, chloroplastology apparatus, etc. Prokaryotic cells have only one chromosome, while in eukaryotic cells, majorly more than one chromosome is present. Now, before discussing about the structure of cells, I want to make you familiarize with some of the terms that are related with cells. First term is cell membrane or plasma membrane. It is the outermost covering of a cell which separates the content of cells from their environment. Second is cell wall. Plant cells have another covering outside plasma membrane made up of cellulose which is called a cell wall. It provides strength to plant cells. Cytoplasm. It is the fluid content that is present inside plasma membrane. It contains specialized cell organelles. Now what are cell organelles? Cell organelles in eukaryotic cells are specialized structures that are perform present that perform various different functions. Examples of some cell organelles are chloroplasts, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, etc. Now moving on to the next term, nucleus. It is the largest and major cell organelle present inside a cell. It is also called as brain of a cell. It is enclosed in a double membrane structure called as nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane. Nucleus also contains the genetic material that are present in cell that is passed from generation to generation. Now moving on to the next slide, structure of cells, specifically animal cell. As I discussed earlier, the main structure that encloses the whole cell is called a cell membrane or plasma membrane which we can see here on the boundary of animal cell. Inside the animal cell, cytoplasm is present which is the fluid present inside the cell containing all different cell organelles. In the center, we can see the major cell organelle or nucleus as we can see here which is enclosed in its nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope which is the boundary of nucleus. Outside nucleus, we can see this connected sac-like structure or tube-like structures which are called as rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. They are called rough because of the presence of ribosomes on their surface. In a cell, ribosomes can either be present or unbounded to the RER or can be freely like we can see here in the image. After the rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum can also be seen in the image. Alongside smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we can see mitochondria. Mitochondria is a double membrane structure and also called as powerhouse of a cell. Alongside mitochondria, we can see a vacuole. In animal cell, large number of small vacuoles are present, like we can see here. Alongside vacuole, we can observe these parallel sac-shaped structures, which are also called as Golgi apparatus or Golgi body, named on their discoverer Camellio Golgi. And we can see another organelle which is specific to or characteristic of the animal cell, called as lysosome. Now moving on to the next slide, here we can see plant cell. Plant cells have many similarity to animal cells, like presence of cytoplasm, nucleus, ribosomes, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, and cell membrane. But plant cells also have some specialized structures like cell wall, which is made up of cellulose and is present outside the cell membrane and provide rigidity to the plant cell. Next structure is vacuole. In animal cells, small number of small size of large vacuoles, large number of small size of vacuoles are present. But in plant cells, uh, less number of vacuoles are present, which are large in size, like we can see here. This vacuole has taken up most of the space of plant cells. Along with, along with this, plant cells have some more specialized structures, which are called plastids. Here we can see two types of plastids in plant cells. Chloroplast, which is this green one, and amyloplast, which is denoted by this blue structure. 
chloroplast is green because of the presence of chlorophyll which gives plants their distinct green color and the plant cells also their distinct green color chloroplast is the site of which plants make their food amyloplast is another cell organelle which is responsible for storage in the next part of discussion i will be discussing about some major type of cell organelles like for starting with endoplasmic reticulum there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum which have ribosome present on their surface and which are the sites of protein synthesis and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is the site for lipid and steroid synthesis together re and r and tcr help in transport of various kind of chemicals and compounds inside the cell which is called as intracellular transport and outside of the cell which is called as extracellular transport after that we can see golgi operators golgi operators has parallel sac like structures which are called as cisternae as we can see here it has two phases cis phase and a trans phase inside golgi operators uh, sorry golgi operators in, in, is involved in repair and synthesis of plasma membrane lysosomes are also synthesized by golgi operators they take part in storage modification and packaging of various kind of compounds that are synthesized by cell now moving on to one of the major important cell organelle mitochondria mitochondria is a double membrane cell organelle it has two membrane outer membrane and inner mitochondrial membrane the inner mitochondrial membrane is folded up many times to form cristae this increases the surface area of mitochondrial membrane inner mitochondrial membrane inside the mitochondria the fruit present is called matrix mitochondria is also called as a powerhouse of the cell as it contains the enzymes necessary for oxidation of food to release energy they produce energy in the form of atp or adenosine triphosphate the next and the last cell organelle for our discussion is called chloroplast it is a double membrane cell organelle it has two micro just like micro uh, mitochondria it has two membrane the outer cytoplasm chloroplast membrane and the inner chloroplast membrane it is the site for photosynthesis as it contains the pigment chlorophyll it fixes the atmospheric co2 into sugars using sunlight and chlorophyll which is used by plants as its food source that's all for our discussion